Hello everyone, welcome to 100% LCFC. I'm down here with Jonathan Morgan. Hi Jonathan, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, I'm really good. And Jonathan, you are the manager of Leicester City Women Football Club, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Good, so I'm down here, we're going to have a little chat with uh, Jonathan, ask him a few questions, and uh, he can tell us about the fantastic season that the ladies have had. Um, yeah, it's been a fantastic season, thanks. It, we've... Um well, we've been beaten, 20 wins out of 20, uh, crowned the champions of the Midlands Premier League, the FA Midlands Premier League at that, promoted into the Northern Prem. Um, got to the third round of the FA Cup, which was the highest um, any team in our level got to this season, and um, just been scoring goals for fun with a great defensive record, so it's been phenomenal to be honest. Yeah, that's correct. Um, 60 points this season, um, 20 wins out of 20. Uh, we've got two games to go, so we are now looking for that uh, perfect record. Um, we've got uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers at Peterborough. Peterborough took a play still. Uh, but um, the girls are still training hard for those two games, and um, it would be nice to finish the season with that record. Uh, well, that's been one of our greatest joys this season is, is the goals, but it's our main goal scorer, Helen Busby, she's on 23 so far. However, We've had goals being chipped in from all over the pitch. My my left back, Lauren Bartle, she scored 13 goals. Uh, attacking mid, Rebecca Knight, she scored um, 11 goals herself. Um, even our centre back, Holly Morgan, has been chipping in with goals and she's had five herself. So the beauty about it is, is that no team can say, oh, that's their main goal scorer. Because if they do try and mark that person out of the game, someone else will just step up and uh, score for us. Oh, massively. Um, to be honest, it couldn't have been any more similar to the men's men's team this year in terms of the team unity, the morale. Um, we have three squads, the reserves, uh, the development team, as well as the first team. And the morale between all three squads is, is phenomenal. Um, it's basically like we're just one, one squad, to be honest. But um, the, the way the girls have um, trained with each other, the way they all get on, um, it has, been a big imp has made a big impact on the actual league itself. Oh, most definitely. I mean, all our girls, they're either um, doing the A-levels at university or working themselves. Um, couple that with the coaches too. Everyone is semi-professional. Everyone has the day jobs or their day requirements. Um, but all the girls, they're making two training sessions a week from 8 till 10 um, on a Tuesday and a Thursday, plus a game on a Sunday, which basically means the whole Sunday is taken up. Uh, but they've... They've, they've all stuck to it together. They've all sort of come together. And I think the fact that everyone has been turned up to training makes makes everyone else turn up to training, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think um, as a whole, Leicestershire has been quite quite lucky with talent coming through. You have a lot of ex-players who have gone on to, to bigger and better things, um, playing in the Super League, um, some even having England caps. Um, you have a lot of girls coming through the academies um, locally that are actually playing for us right now. So. For example, the likes of Molly Baxter, Fiona Watts, um, Holly Morgan, all three came through the actual academy themselves. Uh, Becca Carnelli is another one who came through the Leicester City Academy and are all now quite senior members in the first team. All our home fixtures are played at uh, the Riverside Pavilion, which is on Braunston Lane East, um, next to the Ellesmere College. Um, it varies. It varies between about 50 to 200, I think. On our FA Cup second round game against Radcliffe, we had over um, 200 people watching, which was which was great. We played Sheffield Ladies in the um, FA Cup as well in the third round. Um, Super League team, which again, we had around about the 200 figure again. So. Um, it's been a steady rise and the girls are starting to get used to playing in front of bigger and bigger crowds. Um, um, it varies. Um, at the beginning of the season, it, a lot of people just turned up to watch. Now it's £3 entrance fee um, for adults, £1 for children. Um, and to be honest, since we've actually been charging, I think we've been having more and more people coming in, to be fair. <laughs> oh, most definitely. I mean, you're still supporting Leicester City. Um, it's just the women's team. Um, you're supporting another successful team um, within the actual club. And to be honest, it's, it's such a family environment. There's lots of kids there that come along with their, their mums, their dads, who maybe the sisters or their mum might be playing themselves. Um, there's a lot of um, lot of little side things going on. Uh, just It's just a really fun, joyful atmosphere, to be honest. Y yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big one, isn't it? Because we're now stepping up into the um, FA Northern Prem, which is one below the Super League. And we're not just going up in there to make the numbers. Um, we are going in there to compete. However, we are going to be cautious to know that we have just been promoted, but we do air a bit of optimism where we think that we are going to go in and compete with the very best this season, as because we have had some tough games with the league above and 
they've done very well for ourselves so far. Yeah, you've got um, Preston North End, Stoke City, uh, Nottingham Forest, uh, Derby County. Um, you're going to have the likes of Newcastle, Blackburn, Bradford, Middlesbrough. So a lot of teams quite far up north actually, but but um, it's going to be a very again another tough challenge, but a challenge that we're all relishing. Oh no, most definitely. I mean, everyone loves a local derby, whether it's in the women's game or with the men's. Nottingham Forest and Derby County are still our local rivalries, and um, the girls they get themselves re they're, they're really looking forward to these type of games, and I'm sure the fans will as well. Um, that all then takes us into the Super League too, um, which is definitely our long-term aim. Um, we want to. We're gonna. We want to start fast next season. We want to. We want to be very fit, very physical, as that's one of the biggest differences between our league and the league above. It's just that it's a, that little bit more physical, a little bit more intensive compared to the league we're in. Um, but with what we've got planned for pre-season, we we know that we are going to bridge that gap and that we are going to come in and compete again with those teams. Yeah, there's definitely been an impact in terms of the women's football as a whole. Um, there's a lot more interest being taken. Um, regarding the game a lot more girls are getting in touch because they want to come and play for the likes of West City now because of the women's team um, I think the actual quality of the football has got a lot better as well because the girls now have seen it on a, on a much wider scale and they've seen they've seen the fact that the women can do it and that they can do it very well and that obviously naturally gives that little bit of a push to the, the whole population really to um, come, come down support the game and even just getting involved in the football itself no, definitely. I think the biggest difference for me between the men and the uh, female game is the fact that it is a slower paced game. However, playing playing football myself, one thing I would definitely say the difference is, is the fact that the girls do sort of, they work on their skill a lot more and it's a lot more skill based and skill orientated rather than just having the physical attributes. And you'll probably see a lot more sort of stunning goals compared to the men's games purely because the girls have have improved on their technique from a younger age. Yeah, of course. I'm sure um, Helen Busby would, would actually um, relish that. Um, she's an absolutely massive Leicester City fan herself, and she's actually good that she has to miss half the games due to playing for us, to be honest. But um, she's always there for the taking if anyone wants her. So. Yeah, especially this year with Leicester, because Leicester have obviously been doing very successful themselves. A lot of their games have been switched to Sundays with um, for the TV rights, I'm assuming. Um, and obviously all our games are played on Sundays, 2 o'clock kickoff, so it has been a, quite a lot of uh, fixture clashes this year. Most definitely, and in the shortest time possible. Um, we're going to go up in the league, the next league, and we're going to give it our very, very best to get promoted straight away. Um, again, we go there with obviously caution, but with a bit of optimism, because we do feel that we do have a very good squad. With, with the right little bits of tinkering, we think that we will be um, a team to, to beat next year as well. Oh, if I have to pick one, um, it's, that's difficult because we've had a fantastic season this year and every single individual has contributed to the team so much. Uh, I mean, I must admit, having the likes of um, Nicole Naimio um, come to the club halfway through the season has been a big plus. And I think with a proper pre-season under her belt, she's only going to get better and better and better. Um, well, we um, have our annual sevens tournament for both um, the open age group for the women's and for the under 16s, 14s, 12s, etc. for the kids, um, which will be on in June, the last weekend of June. Um, it's a two day event where teams from all over the country come and participate in both sections. Uh, last year, Sheffield ladies were the actual winners, so we do get the Super League teams coming down as well, which is obviously fantastic. Uh, we're also looking to set up our academy, um, which, will, which will kick off on the 11th of June, which will be from under 10s all the way up to under 16s, um, where we're looking to attract girls in the local area who want to still play for their grassroots team, but also want to come have a chance at Leicester City as well. So play games for us on a Saturday, play games for the grassroots on a Sunday. So as a whole, really, just trying to develop the, 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 the girls' game within the Leicestershire region. Uh, yep, yeah, you can get in touch with us by Twitter, which is at LCWFC underscore official, or via our Leicester City Women's Facebook page, or you can also email us at media, which is M-E-D-I-A, at lcwfc.co.uk. So that was uh, a quick chat with Jonathan. Thank you very much for joining us, Jonathan. Uh, no, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me on the, on the show. 
It's been a great season for Leicester City, both the men and the, the women. No, definitely, and hopefully the men can um, finish off this league with prem being the Premier League champions. Let's hope so. It could be the best year for, for Leicester City all round. And good luck next season. And, and fans, if you are around on Sunday's next season, um, or you can get to the final matches, or in fact, if you're struggling to get uh, tickets for the King Power down here, which I know lots of fans are, get down and support the ladies. Give them a cheer. Um, no, definitely. Um, we'll, we'll be there from Sunday's um, 12 o'clock until about 7 um, when we have home games. And um, I think our first home game next year will be come August time. So, yeah, look forward to having as many new supporters as possible cheering on the girls. That's it from 100% LCFC. We'll catch you next time. Cheerio.